we, I, I, I won't be before you uh, long this morning. I just want to pick up and share some things with you from God's Word as it relates to what God has been saying and what God has been doing. We've been dealing with the series on identity uh, for quite some time. And today I want to begin the process of connecting the dots for you. So I'll do this in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to revisit a passage that, that we've seen before, but I want you to see it within the context that we're going to connect it in this morning. So bow your heads with me for a word of prayer, then we're going to allow God to be God. Lord, open our hearts, open our understanding, speak to us this morning. Felix moves out of the way because he has nothing to say. But we want you to speak clearly, Lord. We want to celebrate you. We want to glorify you. So we bless your holy name, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for who you are. Open our perception. Open our understanding. Open our hearts to hear clearly, Lord, as we give you praise, honor, and glory. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. A um, couple of things by way of review, and then we're going to go into the Word. If you have been missing the series, I want to encourage you to uh, make sure you go uh, to our website, go to our podcast, go to YouTube, um, lock into it. I um, want to thank the Lord. The Word has been getting out all over the country I've been receiving emails and inbox messages from friends all over the U.S. and the world that's saying they really appreciate what God is doing. Here's what we've been talking about, the image of God. As an image bearer, God's design for me is that I become like him and I represent him on the earth. Repeat after me. Say, God wants me to be like him and he wants me to represent him. One more time. God wants me to be like him. And he wants me to represent him. Amen. Last week we threw a curveball at you. And I think I disrupted a lot of your theological framework for those that believe um, consistently that a person is made up of three parts. Mind, body, and spirit. And I talked about, well, nice, cute, all that good stuff. But how can we substantiate that in the Bible? And the thing where I landed is I said to you that there's a dichotomy with unity. And what we meant by dichotomy is that as opposed to thinking that a person is made up of three parts, it's very, very important that we understand when it comes to the issue of identity, all we are are flesh and spirit. And I wanted to drive the point home of the co conditional unity of the flesh and the spirit. Even though we're two parts, they're fused together and you can't separate the two. I, I wanted to drive that point home over and over and over again. And in case you didn't get that, make sure you go back and listen to the series this past Wednesday. We had a chance to dig into that and respond to a lot of your questions. But that is very, very important for the little nugget I want to share with you uh, this morning. Uh, and what that means is your body, your body matters to God. So here's what the uh, statement says on the bottom. Humankind is created a unified person with body and soul or spirit. So here's what I've been doing through the entirety of the series, but it was magnified last week. I am saying the soul and the spirit are the same thing. They're unanimous. I'm saying to you, there is no such thing as the soul being over here and the spirit being over there, that if you were to do the exegetical work and go to Scripture, you'll find that the two are used synonymously. So we saw in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, pointedly, that God created man from the dust of the ground, and man absent the presence of God or the pneuma or the ruach of God in their life, they laid light, lifeless, and it was not until God breathed into the individual that they became a living soul. Uh, and what you saw from the book of um, Genesis chapter 2, that there's a two-fold process, specifically in 2 and 7, involved in the creation of man, not a three-fold process. And the reason that is important, because I want us to stop as we live Christianity and we live life out, stop separating the flesh from the Spirit. Very, very important. Okay, we're going to look at Scripture and kind of walk through that a little bit today. So there's two parts that I'm flesh and I'm spirit and I'm fused together. Now, most of you will remember the series Christocentric. You guys remember that? Some of y'all got the t-shirt, right? I almost wore mine, but it's Vision Sunday, so I wanted to represent well. Um, but I'm going to hit a piece in that to kind of remind you of how important that series was. Did you guys enjoy that series? 
Was that helpful? Amen. I mean, I still hear people talk about that. I want to revisit a passage to kind of help connect the dots for you so it can begin the process of making sense. So before I even move on, here's what I want to come away with today. I want you to walk away from today saying, my identity is in Christ. Don't you even say neighbor? Come on, say it so I can hear you. Say neighbor. My identity is in Christ. Tell the other neighbor. Say other neighbor. Say my identity is in Christ. Now, my hope today in the next few minutes is to begin the process of showing you that. And then next week we're going to really hash that out a little bit in the book of John. And we're going to look at scripture to see what it is saying. But I want to begin the, the process of connecting the dots. So go with me to the book of Colossians. And go to Colossians chapter 2, and we will jump in there and uh, talk about that and allow God to be God in our midst today. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, and we won't have time um, because it's not a series on Colossians. You can always go revisit that. I think that's available for your hearing. I think that was like week 7 when we were doing this, we got to this, so you can get a chance to hear what it is saying. So let me read, let me read, I'm going to read this thing in its entirety, and then I'll come back and I'll flesh it out briefly. Look at verse 6. Say amen if you're there. Okay. Notice what it says. No, that wasn't enough. Amen. Say amen if you're there. Amen. amen. Good, good. It says, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the word, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him you also were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespass and the uncircumcision of your flesh, um, God made alive together with him, having forgiven all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them. Just say amen with me. Amen. I can't read it without getting excited, okay? So now I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm just going to walk you through three simple points um, in this text to kind of help drive this thing home with a couple of sub points. And then Wednesday, we'll dig into it a lot more. But the first thing, I want you to understand with me that as believers in Christ, okay, we are called to be faithful to Christ and the gospel you have received. Now, church, hear me, world, hear me, those that are watching online. Today, I am only speaking to Christians. Y'all say amen. Because y'all, you guys are saved, right? If you're saved, amen, if you're saved. If you're not saved, don't, don't say nothing. But, but if you're saved, come on, if you're a Christian, say, talk to us, preacher. Come on, I need to hear y'all say, come on, talk to me, preacher. I need to wake y'all up, amen. I know the series has been heavy. It's going to be a little light today. So, number one, if you name the name of God and you know who God is and you have accepted him in your life and personal Lord and Savior, you are called to be faithful to Christ and the gospel you have received, okay? That gospel, the kerygma, that, that whole issue of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ has accomplished some things that we have been taken lightly, okay? So I want to begin that process of just walking through that so we can understand what that means. Notice what it says now in verse 6. Look with me at verse 6. It says, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, and notice the next phrase, it says, so walk in him. Okay, very, very important state, very, very important state statement because what that Greek verb is trying to communicate in the grammar of the verb is that, listen, a transformation has begun in you. Don't be schizophrenic with hits and miss 
doing it one day and then not doing it the next day. What the verb is trying to communicate is to continue to walk in him. So here's what that means. If you know God as your personal Lord and Savior, today we can learn how to walk it out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, say walk it out. One more time, say walk it out. Quick illustration, quick illustration. Moses was delivered from Egypt, and then Moses found himself on the brink where Pharaoh and his army was behind him, and the Red Sea was in front of him. And he said, Lord, what we're going to do? And God just says, hey, Moses, walk it out. Yeah, yeah, you got to get that. And Moses says, what do you mean, walk it out? There's water in front of me. And then God, he says, God, you're going to do something? God said, no, I've done done what I'm supposed to do. Excuse the grammar. So here's what God says. What's that in your hand? And he says, oh, this staff? He says, yeah, who gave that to you? Ah, y'all going to get this in a while. And so he says what? Raise it up. And Moses raised it up. And all of a sudden, the seat parted. And God said, I told you to walk it out. Y'all not hearing me, y'all not hearing me, y'all not hearing me. Because I want you to hear me say to you this morning, every person that has given their life to God, you've got a staff in your hand that's going to empower you to walk in your, yeah, 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 yeah. And the problem with me and the problem with you is we've laid our staff down and we want God to do for us what he's already empowered us to do for ourselves. So here's what Paul opens up by saying to the Colossian church. Hey, just as you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, he says, walk in him. That means continue to walk. Walk it out. And notice how. Notice how, okay? So number one, rooted, built up, established, and it said we should have this life of thanksgiving to God. So let me read the text because I'm going to move fast. Rooted, okay, built up in him and established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in Thanksgiving. So here's what that means. When you're walking it out, don't let the wind shake your faith, right? Don't let the world, and we're going to see this in a little while, tell you all kinds of crazy stuff. You need to know that you know who you are in, 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 as it relates to your relationship with God. And when God parts the Red Seas of your life, don't neglect to give him thanks. Ah, uh, come on, I need somebody in here. Yeah. Don't, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you're doing it or that I'm doing it or that we're doing it. The only way we're doing it is God doing it through us. So here's how Paul says it. I can do all things to the church at Philippi through what? Yeah, Christ who does what? So I want you to hear me say this morning, your identity is in Christ and Christ will give you the strength to walk out your identity. Come on, turn your neighbor again and say, neighbor. My identity is in Christ. Tell the other neighbor, say, other neighbor. My identity is in Christ. So here we go. We're going to move fast. So lock, lock into this. So rather than following human traditions, as believers, we must base our trust in God, in whom the fullness of deity resides. And this must be a bad slide because after reside, it should say bodily. All right, let me say it again. This is important. Rather than following human traditions, as believers now, since we're saved, we must place our trust in Christ in whom the fullness of the deity resides. And I'm saying, you're going to see it in Scripture, bodily. Okay? This is the importance of that issue of dichotomy. Okay? So, and then you can read the rest. I'm going to read and I'm going to talk from the text. So look what it says now in verse 8. See to it that no one takes you, what's the word? I mean, y'all talk to me, verse 8. What's that word? Yeah. I'm with the ESV, say it again. What's that word? Yeah. See to it, English translation, this is me, that no one convince you into believing or thinking you are what God did not say you are. Okay? Okay. L look at the rest of the text. Don't let them take you by philosophy, empty deceit, according to human tradition and according to elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. So log into this. Here's what that says in so many things. If the Bible says one thing 
Believe the Bible. Don't let the world fool you into thinking the Bible is wrong. Oh, yeah. I, I want to speak English this morning. Vain philosophies, right? So, so don't want to offend nobody. Don't want to get nobody upset. But a lot of us are good at justifying our sin by saying, you know, I was born this way, so I can't help myself. Philosophies and vain deceit. Come on, are you with me? You got folks saying that ain't nothing wrong with me marrying somebody who has the same sex like me because I just love them. Philosophies, y'all done got quiet, and vain deceit, okay? You've got people saying to you, and I know I'm going to get in trouble for this one, well, it's Colorado and it's legal, so that means I must do it. So philosophies, listen to me, y'all hear me out, and what? Vain deceit. Yeah, why? Because it's human tradition, right? It's people of the world making up this stuff and fooling us into thinking it's okay. But if it's not based on God's word, listen to how we open up. Stand firm on the word of the Lord. Y'all might not like me this morning, but I want you to hear the truth of what God is saying. This is very, very important in knowing who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, guess what you'll do? Live like the world. Yeah, if you don't know who you are, the world will define you and the world will tell you who you are. And guess what will happen? We'll start behaving. But if my identity is in Christ, and here's the word, Christocentric, Jesus at the center, everything about me is going to be about Christ. Are you hearing me this morning? You guys all right? Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Now watch this. It says, see to it that no one take you captive with empty deceit according to the human traditions, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Now, what is it about Christ that the author is using as a comparative? Look at verse 9. In him, the whole fullness of deity dwells. How? I want to pause. I want to pause. Because this to me is the important importance of dichotomy and unity. Here's what we do. You'll notice if I mention Jesus to you, here's what you don't do. You don't say, you don't separate his body from his spirit. Here's what you say. He was God incarnated. And you see him as one. So when his body withstands temptation and his body doesn't sin, here's what you say. Well... He was God. Come on, y'all. Talk to me. That's what you said. Right? Yeah. And then, I don't want to offend nobody. Okay? I'm not offending anybody. So this is just me preaching. Right? And then we're dumb enough. <laughs> I, I don't want to offend nobody. I don't want to offend nobody. But I want, y'all to, I want you to get what I'm talking about, this importance of the dichotomy with unity thing. That, that to say... That, that, you know, well, it was God in him and all that good stuff. So lock into this. Here's what the author is saying. Everything you saw Jesus doing on the earth realm, there was not a dividing line between his spirit and his flesh. What you see him do, he did while in the flesh. And I'm going to go here. And there was nothing special about his flesh that's different than yours. I am talking pre-death. Lock into this. He was born of a woman, just like me, unless you're a test tube, baby. You get what I'm saying? He bleeds just like I did, and he was tempted just like I was. Okay? He ate when he was hungry. He slept when he was tired. Are you with me? There was no difference between me, you, and Jesus prior to his death. And the author is saying clearly, watch into this. Watch the text. Look at the text. Because sometimes we don't exegete text right. Look at it carefully. Here's what it says. It says here, in him, verse 9, the whole fullness of deity 
dwells what? So here's what that says. Let me, let me come down here. Let me come down here. Y'all got to get this. All the God he ever was going to get, that's what deity speaks to. When you saw Jesus, you didn't see a piece of God and not the rest. The fullness of deity dwells in him, right? And here's what that looked like. Here's what that looked like. When Jesus showed up, he just walked by and demons get to trembling. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. Yeah, y'all, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Jesus showed up, folk would come to him. I mean, he, they just touched the hem of his garment past the burden and blood would dry. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. When, when Jesus showed up, he'd see folk hungry and he'd take two catfish and five hot water cornbread. Come on. And he'd feed thousands. When Jesus showed up, are you hearing me? And walk into this and there was nothing different from his flesh and mine. Why is that important, preacher? Because God was in him and his body and his spirit were one. Nobody saw his spirit, listen to this, but they experienced his body. There's Jesus. The only reason they saw him because he wasn't a ghost. You guys all right with me? Okay, y'all with me? Come on, say, he was human like me. One more time, say, he was human like me. Let me give this away. He knew who he was. <laughs> Identity. Identity. He wasn't confused. He, he wasn't. He, yeah. If Jesus, y'all don't get mad with me, okay? Promise me y'all won't get mad with me. So we ain't mad with you, preacher. Come on, make me feel good. Okay, good. If Jesus walked by the marijuana shop, everything had dried up because he walked by. <laughs> Just because he walked by. You can't get what I'm saying? Some of us walk by because we don't know who we are. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Because I'm, I'm losing people. He knew who he was. Here's the connection. Here's the connection. Look with me now. Look with me at verse 10. And you, oh my gosh, and you, come on, say me. One, point to yourself and say self. self. Say it again, say self. self. Lock into this now. And you have been filled with him who is the head, the authority, and the rule, the rule in all authority. So lock into this. Here's why I'm saying I'm talking to Christians. If you are here and you have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, right? Lock into this. The same God who existed in Jesus who walked on the earth upon your salvation, that same God has entered in you and he has empowered you to do everything that Jesus did when he was on the face of the earth. And you've got to hear me say that. The same God. We're not talking, we're not talking, well, he was his son, so he gave him more than he gave me. Stop the lie. The same God. The same God. Come on, say the same God. Say it again, say the same God. I am praying that by the end of this, people in here will know who they are. And we have some identified Christians saying, I'm going to walk in my identity. Come on, say the same God. Say it again, say the same God. So watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. It says here, it says here, who is the head of what? All what? Come on, say authority. Say it again, say authority. Now, this is the reason I want y'all to get the word authority, because when we started the series, I was talking about the fact that you have dominion, you have dominion, you have dominion. You can't exercise dominion if you don't walk in authority. And if Jesus has, let me say it in Scripture, all authority has been given to me in heaven, where? And on earth. And then if at my salvation, he transfers that authority to me, oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh. I like that. I like that. I like that. I'm going to say, come on, say, you better recognize. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. I, I like that. I'm going to get a T-shirt. You better recognize and it's going to say identity on the bottom of that one. I like that. Now watch this. 
So we should be reminded of the death, the resurrection of Christ, who has delivered us from the sins, and don't miss this last part, and the power that threatens us, okay? Let me read, let me read, let me help you all with this. So watch what happens, watch what happens, okay? In him, it says verse 11, say verse 11. In him, you who were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, putting off the body of the flesh. I'm going to explain that, okay? By the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith um, in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. Watch this again, third person plural. And you again, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God has made alive, what? Together with him, having forgiven, what? All our trespasses by canceling the record of their death and stood against us with its legal demands. Lord Jesus. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Let me stop. I'm going to read that last verse in a little while. Read it. Here's what that is saying. I want you all to hear me. Here's what this is saying. If you're in Christ, circumcision of the flesh, here's what that means. He says, I like that phrase. Putting off the body of the flesh. When you came to Christ, 2 Corinthians puts it this way. If anyone is in Christ, he's a what? The old has what? And the new has what? Literally, what's happening here, when I give myself to Christ, and I surrender to him, and I said, yes, Lord, and I follow him symbolically in believer's baptism, here is what's going on. You got to hear this. Jesus takes the old man and he carves out the old you. Y'all not hearing me. And when we go in that watery grave, we go down the old person. And he literally buries the old person. And then we, when we emerge out of that watery grave, we emerge a new person in Christ. You got to get this. You got to get this. You got to get this. Let me give this away for free. The problem is we get up. And here's what we say, well, I don't feel no different. And because we don't feel different, listen to the term, we don't walk it out. You've been changed. You've been transformed. You have put on Christ. Are you hearing me? You are a new person. And until we begin the process of walking in the newness of life, we won't know what newness is feels like. If you've been hating all your life and you didn't stop hating, you don't know what it feels like not to hate. If you've been mad all your life and you're still getting mad with people and you haven't stopped being mad with people, you don't know what it feels like not to be mad with people. Come on, I want y'all to hear me say this. But literally, you've got to understand, when Christ gets a hold of you, you have been made new. Are you hearing me this morning? You have been made new. And then look at this, look at this. And look at what verse 14 says. By canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. Let me tell you what that means. Y'all, I wasn't always saved. I expected to hear me too, preacher. I, I, I was hoping. I was just hoping. I'm going to try it again. Hey, y'all, I wasn't born saved. That makes me feel a little better, right? Because what that means is like me, you too were once sinners. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's what the devil does. And if you're like me, all the things you've done before you came to Christ aren't things that you want to remember. Come on. Are you with me, right? And here's what happened. The moment in this journey we start to do anything that looked like what we did yesterday, here's what the devil will remind you of. He'll remind you of what it used to be like. Come on. Don't go to your high school reunion because right then and there, man, they'll tell you everything, whether you forgot or not. And here's what the enemy will try to do. He will try to take you back there and cause you to live there all over again. But here's what I just read for you in the text. When you gave your life to Christ, listen to what Jesus did. He took a heavenly eraser. Y'all not hearing me. And he went back from the moment you gave your life, erased, erased, 
erase, 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 and lock into this. You're remembering things that in the mind of Christ never happened. I will. Yeah. Because he blots it away and he sends it away as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered anymore because lock into this is covered by the blood. And we're going around remembering stuff that went in. What, what, why are you bringing? What? what? He doesn't remember that because he dealt with it. But if you don't know who you are, the enemy will fool you into thinking that's who you still are. Then when it comes to serving God, here's what you're going to say. You know who I used to be? And Jesus like, yeah, you're a child of God. And the enemy will say, no, you're not. And because we're not confident in our identity, listen to the statement, we believe the lie. Look at this, and I'm going to stop. Because this is just, look at the next phrase. Look at the next phrase. Verse 15. He disarmed the what? Rulers and what? And he put them to what? Doing what? By triumphing. Bunch of church folk yeah. buying wolf tickets from a devil that has no weapons to fight you with. He disarmed him. He has all authority, right? He took his weapons away, right? So guess what? He can't even cause you to remember stuff. He can't even, oh, y'all not hearing me. He, he has no, y'all not hearing me, y'all not hearing, hearing me. So here's what that means like. If he has disarmed the enemy and we know who we are and we walk by the enemy, guess what the enemy ought to do too? He ought to, yeah, y'all get it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he knows that you've got authority over him. But if we don't know who we are, you walk in here, what you going to do? <sighs> Pray for me, saints. The devil is on my back. Pray for what? Did God disarm him or God did not disarm him? Did God deal with him or did God not deal with him? Who in the, I almost cussed, who do he think he is, come on, that can come after you? Who do he think he is? Who do he think he is? I'm a child of the king. You are children of the king. He has no authority over you. You got to know who you are. You got to know you are. When you walk by the enemy, and he ought to run, here's what, demons tremble at the sound of his name. Jesus, I am a son of Jesus. You are sons and daughters. Walk in your authority. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. You are identified with Christ. We must recognize this. And lock into this. Don't make the mistake of saying, but my spirit can do it, but the flesh can't. Jesus did it in the flesh. You have the power. Y'all all right? You have the authority. We can walk it out. We are identified with Christ. No devil in hell. No demon. Principalities. Powers. Come on. Is this making sense, y'all? Walk in the power of who we are. We're children of the King. Come on, y'all. Give God. Give God. Give God. Give God. Give God. Give God. Come on, celebrate him. Give God. Give God praise. Give, come on. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we celebrate you. Lord, we give you glory, Lord, because of who you are. 
You're a wonderful God. You're an awesome God. Thank you for your word, God. It's rich, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And we're excited about Calvary, God. We're children. We're identified with Christ. So we give this to you, God. We bless you. We worship you. In your name we pray and thank you.